Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Pixelmator Pro and I did a video about Pixelmator Pro like two days ago. It's right there. And I'm not exaggerating, like 10 minutes after I posted that photo and, and uh, had it go live here on YouTube, I, uh, I got a marketing email from them saying, hey, we've just updated the app and now include LUT support. And I was like, what? That's so cool. So I thought I'd come back around and talk about the LUT support that they just added to this really fun, just amazing app. I've had a lot of fun with Pixmator Pro. I'm going to try to do more videos. A number of you have mentioned that you would like me to do more videos. I'm going to try to work that into the rotation here because it's super powerful. It's amazingly uh, fun and it's incredibly inexpensive. It is Mac or iOS only, as I've indicated before. But uh, anyway, this video, let's just get into the app. Here it is. It is, uh, first thing, uh, it is version 2.0.8 that includes LUT support. You have to update through the App Store. I actually had to sign out of the App Store and then sign back in for that update to show up. So if you haven't done it yet and it doesn't work the first time, try that. Anyway, LUT support, it's over here. It just says custom LUTs. Just click on that and you've got um, a couple of options here. You've got the ability to choose LUTs. There are like 40 or some LUTs included. And of course, you can choose your own. Now, if you don't know what a LUT is, it stands for lookup table. And basically, it's kind of like a color preset, for lack of a better word. I'm no expert in LUTs, but as I understand it, they're historically used in movie making, right, uh, for cinematic looks and color grading your movie or um, film footage. A few years ago, different photo editing software packages like Luminar, On1, things like that started including LUT support. So you can basically take a LUT file and stick it on your photo and apply a color look to your photo. Same thing here in Pixelmator Pro now. So uh, just turn on the custom LUT option here, and if you click on the little drop-down menu, you've got a few things here. Now there's a bunch of other LUTs down here. I'll go through that. Those are mine. Once you've used one of your own, it shows it here in this drop-down menu. So your LUT file uh, or LUT filter is not gonna look like mine. What is included is the cinematic LUTs, these color blindness LUTs, duotone LUTs, grayscale conversion, and photo filter LUTs. Those five categories and the LUTs that you see in them as I hover over them are included. The ones below that, including street, that is a folder I made. I'll show you how, how to do that. And all these below it are LUTs that I've added as well. Now, I won't go through all of these uh, categories and all the different LUTs, but it does give you the what I call hover to discover. If you hover over one of these, it will display that on the photo. So you've got a cool uh, a number of options here. I really like this cinematic category. Uh, there's got some just some really neat color looks. So maybe I would just choose this cinematic too. The nice thing is, of course, you have an intensity slider. So if you're like, hey, I like it, it's a little too much, pull it down and just reduce the intensity. That is basically an opacity slider. You can also leave that intensity, uh, you know, adjust it uh, season to taste, like for a better word, but then you can come in here and stick different filters on it. So maybe I want to go into lightness and maybe I want to increase the exposure a little bit because maybe it's a little too dark, bump up shadows, reduce contrast, change black point, and basically just adjust the light. So LUTs don't have to be used by themselves. They can be used in combination with some of these other filters. I'm going to turn that off, go back over here. And uh, as I said, you can go and add some of your own LUTs. And the way you do that is you right, excuse me, you click on this right hand menu and choose custom LUT. And then I've got a number of different LUTs I've downloaded for free over the years. I recommend just Googling, you know, free LUTs if you want to download a bunch of different ones. They're generally a .cube file, but I've got uh, folders of LUTs here that I've just collected over the years. I'm not going to get into that, but you can just click on one and just click choose. I have no idea how this is going to look. Hey, there it is. Um, that looks kind of sepia, so this is a great example, actually. It will now show up down here uh, in my uh, in my folder or my drop-down menu, but I've got that, and you know, it's a sepia look, but maybe I don't want that much of it. I can just reduce the intensity, and there's a nice sepia look on that photo with ba basically one click and a slider move. Pretty cool, pretty interesting, and I think that's a, a, a nice feature. Now, I've reset. I'm going to go back into Cinematic LUTs, and I like that number two. Here's a really cool thing. They've... Uh, basically applied some AI to help you reverse engineer the, the LUT. So you can actually see how the filters are affected by building the LUT. And what I mean is you come over here to this little three dots, you click on that, and there's a convert LUT into adjustments. So if you click on that, it basically, as you can see, it just reverse engineers the LUT and it applies all the different filters that would have made up that LUT. 
Now the LUT section uh, or filter is turned off. I turn that back on. You can see it's defaulting to none. It's basically said, okay, let me break this LUT down into the different adjustments here based on the uh, different filters that would be required to make up that LUT. I hope that makes sense. So you can see I, now I've basically got all the filters that would have made up that LUT um, individually adjusted. So that gives me the ability to come in here and just say, hey, I like that LUT but I want to kind of refine it and make some adjustments so that it, you know, isn't exactly the way it was. Maybe I want to make some changes. I don't know. I don't have a plan for this necessarily. Actually, uh, I am going to go in here and just adjust the brightness, pull up the highlights a little bit, pull the contrast down slightly, and maybe adjust that black point, kind of flatten it out a little bit. I don't know. I'm just kind of hacking here. Let's say I like that. So now I've just basically reverse engineered the LUT and adjusted it to my taste. But now maybe I want to have this as a LUT. So you can go do that. You can go up here and you can just say export adjustments as LUT. Click on that and you can just name this and put it anywhere you want. I'm not going to do it, but you can now save this as your own LUT and then add it back in as a different LUT yourself back into Pixelmator. Pretty cool, pretty fun, very flexible. Another cool thing here is that if you click Reveal in Finder, you can uh, see it'll open up the folder where these different LUTs are stored. Click on Custom LUTs, and here you can see the different folders that are included. Cinematic, Color Blindness, Duotone, Grayscale, and Photo Filter. All those LUTs and those folders are included. Those are the ones that are built into the app. Street is a folder I built myself. I've got a few different LUTs here. And let's say I really like these teal and orange LUTs, but I want to put them in a folder. So let me first, hang on, let me go back and show you here. You will see that these teal and orange are just sitting here separately, not in a folder, whereas street I created and these other folders above it are actually uh, included in the app. So what I want to do is create a folder for teal and orange. I go to reveal and finder, click on custom LUTs. I'm going to highlight all these teal and orange, and I'm just going to make a folder for them. So click on that. It's got new folder with items. You can see, see that. I'm going to call this teal and orange and hit enter. Now I've got a teal and orange folder. So if I close that and I click here, you can see I've got a teal and orange folder. So it allows you to add your own LUTs and then create a folder for them so you can keep them organized. I think that's just fantastically awesome. And what I'm going to do now is go into this teal and orange LUT, which I really like a lot, but I want to customize it and basically adjust the look of the photo. So the things I want to do here include a little bit of a white balance shift and uh, a little bit of a tint adjustment as well. I'm going to go into lightness. I'm going to bump that exposure a little bit. This is a little too dark for me. Take down the highlights, pull up the shadows, maybe a little bit of brightness, a little bit less contrast, a little bit lower on the black point. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go up here and I'm actually going to make this a little bit cooler. I want to do something about like that, a little bit more on the tint. I'm basically just making some fine tune adjustments to this LUT. I'm going to bring those highlights down, just trying to see where I like it. I think I like it like that, but I want to increase the brightness of the photo a little bit. Now I'm going to go into hue and saturation and let me just experiment with sliding this a little bit. If I go to the right, getting a little bit more of that warmth. If I go to the left, I'm getting a little bit more of the coolness. I think I'm going to actually go to the right and pick up some of that warmth, maybe a little bit of vibrance. And it might seem like I haven't done that much, but if I go and turn off the LUT, you can see what the LUT has done to the photo what versus what my adjustments have done to this photo. So let me turn off the custom LUTs. I've re basically removed the LUT from this edit. That's what the photo would look like without that teal and orange LUT. When I turn it back on, you can see it's had a massive impact on the photo. And again, that's what I think are so cool about LUTs. It can either give you a really impactful edit that maybe you're happy with, or it could be something that gives you a launching off point to then go and refine it as I've done here. I also sometimes will do it as a last ditch, uh, not a last ditch effort, that sounds like I've given up, but maybe I've done some edits and I'm just not fully satisfied and can't quite figure out what I want to do. I might go stick a LUT on it to give it a little bit more oomph and maybe take me in a slightly different creative direction. The point is they're flexible, they're powerful. You can reverse engineer them to go in and refine and create your own LUTs. There's really just a lot of fun, powerful stuff you can do. And that's why I'm excited about this LUT capability being added to Pixelmator Pro. Really just amps up the power and the flexibility in an app that's already super powerful, super flexible. And as I've said in countless videos about Pixelmator Pro already, 
it's just a lot of fun. So hopefully that gives you some ideas about what you can do with LUTs here in Pixelmator Pro. New feature, make sure you update in the App Store and then go have a play. And if you're like me, you will probably be surfing different websites looking for free LUTs to download. And of course, there's a lot of filmmakers and folks that actually create LUT packs and sell them as well. Okay, my friends, that's it. LUTs in Pixelmator Pro, have fun. Enjoy yourself out there. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon in the next video and adios.